This today on day three of 2020 preseason testing was a common sight. We had so many red flags during today and the day three again of 2020 preseason testing. And in this video, I'm going to review why there were so many red flags and look at all the teams and how they got on during day three and also look at overall how the teams have done so far in the first preseason test of the new season. But before we do that, Let's look at the full results of day three of 2020 preseason testing. So here is the top 10. Valtteri Bottas fastest of all on a uh, 115.7 with 65 laps. Lewis Hamilton second. Ocon third on a 117.1 with 76 laps. Stroll 116 laps, 117.3. Kvyat 17.4 with only 62 laps. Giovinazzi did 152, which is very, very good. For Alfa Romeo on a 117.4. Ricardo 117.5, 93 laps. Max Verstappen 117.6, 86 laps. Gasly 59 laps on a 117.7. Alex Albon 118.1 on 83 laps. And then the bottom um, six from this day of testing today. Carlos Sainz 118.2 on 76 laps. And Roman Grosjean. Only 48 laps, 118.3. Sebastian Vettel did do 100 laps, but they're definitely not doing as many laps as they should do, Ferrari, as Vettel did a 118.3 as well. Lando Norris, 118.4, 49 laps. Latifi, 72 laps, a 119 flat. And Magnussen, 119.7, but only four laps, of course, because of his crash, meaning that Haas only did today 52 laps compared to, I think, 100 plus that they did, or 150 plus that they did on day two. So definitely not a good day for Haas, but we will get into that later on. But now let's get into, first off, Mercedes, who've had a good day. They push a bit harder and done a bit more lower fuel or more so qualifying simulation runs today uh, during day three of testing. And it has, once they've started to push it, looked definitely very good. Very hard to say, though, still, whether they do have the best car, and I think that goes as well for Red Bull and Ferrari, but reliability's there, the consistency of the car um, in terms of handling is there, and without a doubt, it still does look a good or even very good racing car for 2020. How good it is, we won't find out, I think, at least for another week once Ferrari, Red Bull, and even Mercedes themselves start to push a bit harder, but it does look good, and they have had, I think, definitely a good first test the only thing really to see is again once they start pushing the car a bit harder on lower fuel to see how quick this 2020 car really is next up though is ferrari who have not had a good day today first off reliability issue in the morning causing a red flag one of the four red flags we had during day three not good obviously uh, and ferrari have not in terms of mileage, done that well during the first test. They're actually out of the 10 teams, eighth in terms of total laps. And they've done over 100 laps less than Mercedes in the first test. So you cannot say that in terms of track time and running that Ferrari have done well. They really have not. And they've got to improve that in the second test. But also, as we saw in day one and day two, not pushing at all, not thinking at all or even trying to set any kind of or any decent lap time. And definitely Ferrari have a lot more to give when it comes to that. Uh, but Matteo Bonotto came out today and said that Mercedes and Red Bull are faster than Ferrari. Now, he could be bluffing, and I think it's hard to say right now and kind of impossible to say right now if they are slower than Mercedes and Red Bull, because we don't know what Ferrari exactly is doing. But I think also with Red Bull and Mercedes, they are also way off where their limit is in terms of speed. So who knows whether they are slower or if they're faster. But if he is more so telling the truth, which I think he is uh, more prone to than, say, a, a Toto Wolf, then obviously it's not looking good for Ferrari. And still, when you look at the car on board... The handling of the Ferrari, I mean, of course, it'll be faster than last year's car. And the aerodynamics will be better than it was this time last year, but it will for everyone. So that's not an achievement. The onboard 
camera of the Ferrari still shows the same weaknesses as the 2019 car. In the slow corners, they do not have a good front end. And if you compare it to the Mercedes, well, there's no comparison to be had. The Mercedes can get their car right into the apex. The Ferrari just cannot, which is exactly the key difference between those two cars from last year. And it looks as though it's the same this year. Again, Ferrari do have plenty of time, you know, to fix that. And I'm sure, and they have said they're going to put some new parts on their car between now and once they start running in Melbourne. But it doesn't look great for Ferrari at the moment. And they are definitely one of, I think, the three teams, and I'll get onto the two other teams in a moment. They're definitely one of the three teams that definitely has to improve during the second test. Obviously, show more pace, but do a lot more running with the car. Next up, Red Bull, um, and similar to Mercedes, the car on track looks good, nicely balanced, does look like a very good car aerodynamically, but the only difference is, compared to Mercedes today, is Red Bull didn't do any real low fuel running and really did concentrate heavily on race simulations and race pace, and rightfully so, and I think Red Bull have concentrated on that probably the most out of any team, um, you know, in that top three bracket, so... Red Bull definitely, just like the other two top teams, nowhere near their full potential. But Red Bull, uh, keen to get their eye in as to how quick they are with a load of fuel on board and I guess a race setup. But yeah, the Red Bull car, whenever you look at it on board or off board, it looks very nicely balanced. It looks like a good car and a car that Verstappen and Albon, who were both in the car today, can work with. So can't say Red Bull had a bad test. They haven't done... Um, I don't think they've done the most running. I think Mercedes have done the most running during testing, but the reliability of the Honda power unit has been very good in the Red Bull. I can't say at all it's been a bad testing, and I guess the only thing to see in the second test is how quick it is on lower fuel and, of course, with the power unit turned up a bit more. Now into the midfield. First off, McLaren. And McLaren today really did only concentrate, just like they did really, on the afternoon session of day one and really all of day two. Uh, yet again, they concentrated on the pace of the car on uh, a race fuel load and really tried to, again, figure out and understand and work on the balance of the car uh, on a race fuel load and try and you know figure out what the best setup for the car is when um, on, again, a heavy fuel load. So, again, there's not much to say about McLaren. I don't think there's been anything during the first test that's gone bad for them. Um, there's nothing that's gone, I'd say, particularly well that you can absolutely notice. And I think definitely they're not pushing as hard as other teams in the midfield so far in you know the first test, such as Racing Point, Renault. Uh, those are two teams that I think are definitely pushing a bit harder than McLaren in terms of their pre-season testing program so far. But... I think McLaren, yeah, nothing bad's happened, nothing great's happened, but the car looks fine, and hopefully we get to see a bit more of it pace-wise, um, you know, in terms of the qualifying fuel loads in the second test. Next up is Renault. Renault today, in terms of reliability, up until their late reliability issue that caused the final and fourth red flag of the day, their reliability was pretty good. They actually did quite a number of laps i think they did 130 or 140 laps today so good um and a much better day for renault than it was yesterday yesterday they only did what was it 80 90 laps which was i'm afraid not good enough considering what the other teams are doing uh, but renault today a lot better the only concern is that when they've done lower fuel running i don't actually think the raw speed so far of the renault um is actually that good at all of course, we won't know whether, you know, once we get to Melbourne, whether it really is not that good at all, the actual raw speed of the car. But I think that might be down to them, I mean, clearly not being ready for uh, the start of the season as other teams were, such as McLaren. And of course, Renault didn't even uh, reveal any of their car in the, uh, in the flesh at their car reveal event. So, yeah, Renault... I don't think they've had a good first test, though. Again, running or time on track has not been long enough. They haven't done enough laps. I mean, yeah, today they did uh, quite a bit more, which was a good thing. But still, overall, not enough laps on track, not enough time on track. And again, 
the um i think the lower fuel running has not been that impressive either so this overall renault need to you know show a lot more uh, reliability and a bit more uh speed on a lower fuel mode uh fuel yeah mode um in the second test hopefully they do hopefully they bring some new parts and i think they definitely will and uh yeah hopefully we see a bit more of what renault have to offer in 2020 this time next week next up alpha tauri um alpha tauri today didn't do as many laps as they probably wanted to uh they still did quite a few i think the reliability is not absolutely there for them because they did have some reliability issues on day one but alpha tauri i think are looking absolutely fine reliability again is mostly there and i think the pace of the car and the handling of the car especially is looking good and i think they are one of the midfield teams that has definitely not shown anywhere near close to what they can actually do on lower fuel so i think with alpha tauri a lot more to come and i think they are kind of a dark horse so far with the kind of car they have again if you look at the car on board the handling of the car it looks good very well balanced it looks like a car that you know kivyat and gasly can definitely work with for 2020 so looking good for alpha tauri so far and i think if they really start to push a bit harder on lower fuel in the second test don't be surprised if they're right up there you know with some of the top midfield teams don't be surprised at all because i think again the raw speed of this car may surprise people once they actually show it uh, or a bit more in the second test next up racing point another good day uh, the racing point is clearly faster than last year's car by absolute miles you know than it was this time last year and great to see you know racing point have made such progress and during the first test that will be i think the biggest story is the progression that racing point have made whether it's a 2019 mercedes in pink or not doesn't matter they have made massive progress and they've got i think definitely fundamentally a very good car for the 2020 formula one season and i think out of the midfield you'd have to say they are the biggest positive coming out of the first test hopefully they continue it in the second uh, we'll see of course if mclaren and renault or alpha tauri you know see what they have a bit more um of their qualifying uh pace in the second test but yeah after the first test racing point definitely are the biggest positive to come out of the midfield without a doubt and uh car definitely on track as well in terms of the handling looking much better than it was 12 months ago next up is alfa romeo and alfa romeo i think similar to renault have a disappointing first test the reliability has been fine um and you know the consistency of it you know being on track and not being an absolute mess has been again it's been fine but again when you look at the car on board you watch the car through the corners it just doesn't look really like anything better than last year's car it, it again as i've said uh, during my watch alongs i think i said with my review of day two the alfa romeo on board especially looks very ponderous aerodynamically it doesn't look like it has a ton of grip front or rear and yeah it just doesn't again it doesn't look like a bad car but it just doesn't doesn't stand out at all so yeah alpha just doesn't look that i guess pleasing if you're an alpha romeo or a kimi Raikkonen or antonio giovinazzi fan and whenever they've done uh slightly or more so lower fueled running their pace has not been really impressive either again very similar to renault when they've done that lower fuel running the pace has not really been what you would expect considering the tires they were on and you know what time of day they set their um their lap time on so i think alfa romeo again reliability is there uh race pace i don't know if they've got good race pace or not very hard to tell but i want to see improvements on the um on the single lap or more so you know the lower field running because i think they have been again when you look at the car it just doesn't really stand down doesn't look that great and also another team that looks like that is kind of Haas but Haas have not really pushed at all during the first test I think Haas have been probably the most conservative team in the midfield when it comes to engine modes and fuel load as well so I think yeah Haas 
a lot more from them to come during the second test in terms of overall lap time. Uh, they have done plenty of laps in the, you know, in testing. Didn't do many laps today, only 52, which is very disappointing. And, you know, Kevin Magnussen, of course, had the crash that caused the red flag uh, early on in the afternoon session, which it's not his fault. It was a puncture on his car that caused him to spin and crash out. But, you know, that's just the way it is. But that'll be disappointing for Haas to miss out on that track time. Hopefully they can replace that uh, somehow you know, in the second test. But, yeah, with Haas, I don't think you can say anything about what their fundamental pace is like because, again, we have seen no lower fuel running. They've just concentrated, rightfully so, on race pace because that was their biggest weakness of 2019. Hopefully their car fundamentally is quick and I'm sure we'll see in the second test a bit more of that. And the last team is Williams, who today did not have a great day wasn't awful um again you can clearly see the dramatic increase in speed compared to last year's williams car so they're definitely again continuing to show that the williams car is miles faster than it was this time last year absolute miles faster the only disappointment was that latifi um who caused the second red flag of the day um he had a reliability issue, some kind of engine issue. Did get out later towards the day in the last half an hour or so, but cost him a lot of time, and that would be disappointing. But that's just the way it is, and that's what's testing for. You know, that's what is you know testing is basically designed for. It is to find out your issues, iron them out, and also kind of find out uh, how quick your car is as well. So that's just the way it is. But for Williams, I think very good first test. Again, they are going to be this season in terms of overall lap time compared to what they did last year. They're going to be the biggest gainers out of anyone, which is not a massive surprise, but at least they are making uh, even more progression than I think was expected um, this year so far. But yeah, looking good for Williams and definitely um, I'm hoping they can keep that up in the second test and not fall away dramatically compared to the other teams once we start getting into the first few races as well. But guys, that's it for the review of day three. And that is it as well for the first pre-season test. I won't be back, guys, until Wednesday morning, hopefully, for uh, day four, the morning session of day four for pre-season testing. That's the next time I will be doing any content. So guys, until that video coming up, or that stream rather, coming up on Wednesday, it has been me, Chazzer HD. Goodbye.